Also, did you notice that there are no screws holding this thing together? It's all about seams. And that's why this video is a bit more controversial than some of those others that you've seen. It's not a review of anything on this product, but let me show you what I did to get into this thing. That's exactly right. You have to cut into it. And as you can tell, there's two pegs here. Well, it's the same thing on the opposite side. Plus there's two on the far end and two in the center. That's a lot of pegs holding this thing together. That's why it's hollow, but it's still necessary to do it this way. Take a look at the inside of the turbine here. You can see those pegs. Well, I didn't have it lit as well, but yes, I did cut out the back end of the exhaust because I want a light to show through. Let me show you what I did with the turbines. So I didn't want to look all the way through to the actual exhaust and I covered it with just an old window screen. Take a look. So if you've got a drill bit that's roughly eight inches in length, you can drill right through the actual instrument cluster. Well, what would be the instrument cluster? Right into the front of the fork or the nose of the cycle. Take a look. As soon as you drill and clean it out, it is time to fish the wire through there. So you wrap it around a sturdier wire and take your electrical wire and feed it through. So we know this thing does not have a screen. Let's take this translucent material and make one. So this part of the build was a bit more nerve wracking simply because I didn't know if it was going to work. I had to figure out how to reattach those turbines without making them look glued on or threaded on or having a ugly looking seam. The best thing to do was to use this styrene and it was complicated because it would not stay in place until I glued it to itself, and that's what I had to do. Take a look at the process.
Now this part of the build is the most relaxing. It's the painting. And yes, I did paint it with an airbrush, all of the black and all the crevices. I did not wipe off the excess. I just let it dry. I came back with color shift paints and all of the metallic areas. And I finished it off with this silver rub and buff. Now you can be as generous with it as you want or as stingy as you want. It all depends on the look that you want to have. So take a look at the rest of the video and see if this is something you would like to do to your cycle. Everybody's gonna have a different point of view on how to paint it. So I won't even go through all the different techniques. It just depends on what you want to see. I did paint the guitar and I really like the way it turned out. Now you gotta stick around till the end so you can see what else I did with this guitar. So I've decided to use the 4506 rechargeable board once more so that I can attach a LiPo battery like the one you see here. This allows me to have a prolonged use of the actual item. Well, I'll just say more play time. So this is the 4506T with the battery. It's a 750 milliamp battery. It is a LiPo battery, so it is rechargeable. Again, it gives me lots of play time. And because the rechargeable board and battery going up front where it's hollow, 
it's gonna make it very easy to install. Now I've attached a USB-C magnet so that I can quickly recharge the battery without having to cut out another opening to insert the end of that USB-C connect. And these quick connects make it so much easier to remove the battery if I ever have to replace it or replace the board. Because it's going up front, it's going to be easy to get to. Now let's do a light test on the entire system. Anytime you're working with electronics on a project, you want to make sure you run a light test on all of the different components, especially before you put it back together, because then it may be too late and you'll have to break it apart again. So while you have all of your wires all over the place, just like spaghetti, make sure you run that light test. And if it's flickering or if it's not making a correct connection, this is the time to fix it before moving on to any other part of the project. Now this is my second light test and this was on the headlamps, the engine, and the star that I wanted lit. Now you've got to make sure that everything works. These are all working off of one single connection and if there's any flickering, I've got to fix it. This is the third light test. This is on the panel or the dashboard. And because it flickers, it had to be on its own separate connection. But we've got one more light test to do, and that's on the turbines. Let's take a look at what they turned out to be. Now, before we move on to that final test and final presentation, I do want to remind you that I only have one of these $70 toys or collectibles. But if you're okay with this looking like it does out of the catalog, you'll be fine. Set it on the shelf and move on. Or leave it in a box and somebody else will enjoy it after you die. But if you want to put in that extra time and effort and truly get some enjoyment out of this, get some more playtime, then you might want to opt for some painting, adding some lights, doing something just a little bit different. Well, this is our final test on the lights. These are the turbines. I did add the IR remote. You can turn up the power or turn it down. This turns out really, really well. I'm happy with it. I did have to replace those LEDs for the turbines to be just a little bit brighter, but I love the final result. <laughs>